Hi there, I am Ariel, a virtual avatar with Energency and Agri News, and I want to share that this week, Senator Richard Blumenthal kicked off the Senate hearing on artificial intelligence with a speech written and recorded by ChatGPT. During the hearing, Senator Blumenthal shared the stage with Sam Altman, who is the creator of OpenAI, and at there was a big focus about the risks associated with the lack of any regulation on artificial intelligence. Uh, first of all, uh, Professor Marcus, we are here today because we do face that perfect storm. Some of us might characterize it more like a bomb in a China shop, not a bull. And as Senator Hawley indicated, there are precedents here, not only the atomic warfare era, but also the genome project, the research on genetics, where there was international cooperation as a result. And we want to avoid those past mistakes, as I indicated in my opening statement, that were committed on social media. Uh, that is precisely the reason we are here today. Chat GPT makes mistakes, all AI does, and it can be a convincing liar, what people call hallucinations. Uh, that might be an innocent problem in the opening of a judiciary subcommittee hearing where a voice is impersonated, mine in this instance, uh, or quotes from research papers that don't exist, but Chat, GPT, and BARD are willing to answer questions about life or death matters, for example, drug interactions. And those kinds of mistakes can be deeply damaging. I'm interested in how we can have reliable information about the accuracy and trustworthiness of these models and how we can create competition and consumer disclosures that reward greater accuracy. The National Institutes of Standards and Technology actually already has an AI accuracy test, the face recognition vendor test. It doesn't solve for all the issues with facial recognition, but the scorecard does provide useful information about the capabilities and flaws of these systems. So there's work on models to assure accuracy and integrity. My question, uh, let me begin with you, Mr. Altman, is uh, should we consider independent testing labs to provide scorecards and nutrition labels or the equivalent of nutrition labels, packaging that indicates to people whether or not the content can be trusted, what the ingredients are and what the garbage going in may be because it could result in garbage going out? Yeah, I, I think that's a great idea. I think that companies should put their own sort of, you know, here are the results of our test of our model before we release it. Here's here's where it has weaknesses. Here's where it has strengths. Uh, but also independent audits for that are, are very important. These models are getting more accurate over time. Uh, you know, this is, this is, as we have, I think, said as loudly as anyone, this technology is in its early stages. It definitely still makes mistakes. We find that people, that users are, are pretty sophisticated and understand where the mistakes are that they need or likely to be, that they need to be responsible um, for verifying what the models say, that they go off and check it. Um, I, I worry that as the models get better and better, uh, the users can have sort of less and less of their own discriminating thought process around it. But, but I think users are more capable than we give, often give them credit for in, in conversations like this. I think a lot of disclosures, which if you've used ChatGPT, you'll see about the inaccuracies of the model, um, are also important. And I'm I'm excited for a world where companies publish with the models information about how they behave, where the inaccuracies are, and independent agencies or companies provide that as well. I think it's a great idea. Uh, I alluded in my uh, opening remarks to the the jobs issue, the economic effects on employment. Uh, I think you have said, uh, in fact, and I'm going to quote, development of superhuman machine intelligence is probably the greatest threat to the continued existence of humanity, end quote. Uh, you may have had in mind the effect on, on jobs, which is really my biggest nightmare in the long term. Uh, let me ask you, uh, what your biggest nightmare is and whether you share that 
concern. Like with all technological revolutions, I expect there to be significant impact on jobs, but exactly what that impact looks like is very difficult to predict. If we went back to the, the other side of a previous technological revolution, talking about the jobs that exist on the other side, um, you know, you can go back and read books of this. It's uh, what people said at the time. It's difficult. I believe that there will be far greater jobs on the other side of this and that the jobs of today will get better. I, I think it's important. First of all, I think it's important to understand and think about GPT-4 as a tool, not a creature, which is easy to get confused. And it's a tool that people have a great deal of control over and how they use it. Uh, and second, GPT-4 and things, other systems like it, uh, are good at doing tasks, not jobs. And so you see already people that are using GPT-4 to do their job much more efficiently um, by helping them with tasks. Now, GPT-4 will, uh, I think, entirely automate away some jobs and it will create new ones that we believe will be much better. This happens, again, my, my understanding of the history of technology is one long technological revolution, not a bunch of different ones put together, but this has been continually happening. We, as our quality of life raises and as machines and tools that we create can help us live better lives. Hello there, I'm glad you were checking our posts. And yes, I am a virtual person, but I would love to connect with you with our creators so we can enjoy a real conversation with you. And maybe we can chit chat Wednesday or Thursday after lunch hours, of course. So please send me a reply and I'm looking forward to seeing you soon.